fix from the year 2019. All right, uh, number six is a function f g h r twice differentiable function, meaning you have you are able to take the derivative twice, uh, at least, and g of two and then h of two is equal to four. All right, the line y equals given over here is tangent to. Oh, wait a minute, what does that mean by the word tangent? The word tangent means they have the same slope. but also shares a point. That's what we get to realize. Uh, both tangent, uh, to the graph G at x equals two and then H at x equals two. All right, so they want you to find H prime of two. How do you find the H, of H prime of two? Oh, wait a minute. We know that this line is tangent to H when x equals two, you see. So therefore, the slope of the tangent line is equal to the h prime of 2, which is equal to here, 2 thirds. So we realize the h prime of 2 is equal to 2 thirds. Not bad. First question. All right, let's look at part B. Let a be the function given in this way. Write an expression of a, a prime of x. And then they want us to find the a prime of 2. All right, so how are we going to do that? Let me write down b here. You see, I have to have the product root here again. So a prime of x is equal to 9x squared h of x, and then uh, plus 3x cubed h prime, uh, h prime of x. But they told us that x is equal to 2 here because a, uh, uh, then what we get to realize, so we, we already found the first answer. But when I plug in 2, then I get 9 times 2 squared, and then h of 2 plus 3 times 2 to the third power times h prime of 2. All right, so this becomes four. Four times nine becomes 36. And then 36 times four uh, is equal to 144. So first time is 144. Now, our second one is eight times three, which is 24 times, uh, yeah, two third. So three, three cancels away, so we get uh, 16. Then we get the 160 becomes the answer. Two points right over here. Alrighty. Now let's look at part C. The function h satisfies this uh, expression here, and it is known that the limit as h x approaches 2 can be uh, eva uh, evaluated using the log tiles rule. What does it mean by log tiles rule? Wait a minute. When I plug in two, then top and bottom has to be approaching either infinity over infinity or zero over zero. Alrighty. Then, uh, then wait a minute. So when I plug in two, top is equal to zero. That means bottom is supposed to be equal to zero as well. That's how I can figure out uh, f of two. So in other words, one minus f of two to the third power has to be equal to zero. Then you can see that f of two should be equal to one. That's basically what we get to realize. Now, uh, but let us continue here. Uh, H prime or f f prime of 2. How would you be able to find that f prime of 2? Now, if you're to use the L'Hopital's rule, one. 
uh, top becomes limit of x approaching 2 has to be equal to 2x on top and the bottom becomes negative 3 f of x quantity square times f prime of x. Now if I were to plug in 2 uh, because we know that the function was twice differentiable that means it was already continuous since the function was continuous we realize that the limit as x approaches 2 should be equal to the value of h of 2 which was equal to 4. So that's one thing that we have to realize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in all these two here all over the place and then uh, hopefully I'll be, get, I'll be able to get uh, what you call it uh, the value here uh, h prime uh, f prime of 2. So when I plug in 2 I should be getting 2 times 2 which is equal to 4 over negative 3 times uh, f of 2 we realized that that was equal to 1 so 1 squared times f prime of 2 should be equal to 4. Then you can realize that uh, you can divide by 4. So we get to realize that 1 over negative 3 f prime of 2 should be equal to 1. That tells me that f prime of 2 should be equal to negative 1 third. So that's how we can get the answer. Now let's try to look at part B. So it is known that h of x is greater than g of x uh, in, this, uh, in these cases. Uh, but except I guess one place when h of 2 and then g of 2, both of them are equal to 4. That k be the function. Uh, satisfying uh, between these two from x goes from 0 to the k is k continuous at uh, what you call it now uh, x sub 2 now how do you calculate if k is continuous the fact that something is continuous then it has to satisfy two conditions we have to realize that uh, k of 2 has to be equal to the limit of uh, k of x as x approaching 2. So that has to be satisfied. First, uh, one thing that which we get to realize is this. I'm going to go back to the word differentiable. The fact that these are differentiable, that means we are assuming that uh, g and h are already continuous. If g and h are already continuous, then what we get to realize is g of 2, which is equal to limit as x approaching 2 of g of x, has to be equal to 4, and so as uh, h of 2 for the limit of h of x as x is approaching 2 also has to be equal to 4 because that's what was said earlier here and then the word differentiable and then this information comes together giving us this one then I want to figure out what k of 2 is oh based upon this idea I realized that k of 2 should be less than or equal to h of 2 which is greater than or equal to g of 2, but wait a minute. A g of 2 and then h of 2, both of them are equal to 4, so we get to realize that k of 2 should be equal to 4. Because upper bound is 4, lower bound is 4. So therefore, k of 2 has to be equal to 4. Let's look at the second idea. So if this, is, if this inequality holds true, then the limit of those things has to be also equal to it should be true as well as long as x x value is within 1 to 3 so then we, we could say 
limit of g of x. That's x approaching 2 has to be less than or equal to limit of k of x. That's x approaching 2 has to be uh, less than or equal to limit of h of x as x is approaching 2. And then we get to realize that, wait a minute, we realize that that value is equal to 4. We talked about it earlier here. And this value is equal to 4 because we talked about that over here. Then what do you realize? Limit of k of x as x approaching 2 also has to be equal to 4 because it's surrounded by 4. And you can see that they are equal to each other. Since k of 2 is equal to the limit of k of x as x approaching 2, k of x is continuous at x equals 2. That's what we can say. All right, so with that one, I'm going to close up for number 6.